prehistory and all because blokes like Rod Wells, how did he put it? Like mucking around in caves. Well, speaking of ancient beasts, you'd have to say that we've always had, at best, a pretty uneasy relationship with the next beast on tonight's list. One that's been in the news very recently from the top end, unfortunately, in the worst possible way. This country's saltwater crocs are the largest living reptiles in the world, but by the late 1960s they'd been hunted almost to the brink of extinction. Back then a guy called John Dimmick was a crocodile hunter, but John had a dramatic change of heart, shifting sides from hunter to protector. This idea of the, the romantic crocodile Dundee thing, oh, you know, and the beautiful lady, often it's not, I mean, it really isn't like that at all. You have to secure your crocodile. Sometimes that means diving down into the water, um, retrieving it, not knowing what's down there. Often you have excretia coming out, juices from its stomach, uh, like a vomity sort of soupy thing coming out of its mouth, which really stinks. When you're skinning a crocodile, the meat ants will get the smell of the meat. And so meat ants are biting you and the, and the flesh of the crocodile, you know, while you're skinning it. The hunting period really started after the Second World War, uh, 1945, 46 and people were able to just harvest crocs all over the place and sell the skins. Then there were so many crocs that people never really gave much thought about the crocs would disappear, but then they started to disappear. You know, a lot were taken out uh, before 51 and then the, hunt, the hunting went right up until 71. I come from England and I hitchhiked to Australia in 1963. I was actually shipwrecked off Cape York Peninsula on a German fishing boat. After three days on a desert island with, with a number of other fellows on that boat, we got picked up and brought in to Cairns. I arrived with, with nothing in my pocket or half a shirt on my back, no shoes or boots or anything, and um, I met up with a crocodile hunter who wanted a mate to go out crocodile hunting with him. Anyway, he asked all these other fellows who had been on this boat with me to go with him, and they all backed out of it one way or another. But I was always saying, oh, let me go, let me... Yeah, I want to go, you know, sort of looking for adventure. And in the end, I think rather reluctantly, he said, OK, I'll take you along, you know. I think people are fascinated by an animal that can kill them. It has to be said, there's something about crocodiles, when you look at them, they've got this enigmatic smile and they've got this unblinking eye that looks at them. Most people, the thought crosses their mind that this animal is sizing them up. They're predators, they eat people. You know, anything that eats people has a special role in, in society and always has, you know. And, and uh, sharks are similar, have similar, um, uh, a similar fascination for people. Snakes poison people, you know, I don't think they hit the, hit the five-star media attention as much as, you know, you, you crawl away and die under a bush, and it's a little bit different than being, being you know, uh, grabbed off the bank and your arms and legs ripped off and things like this. I mean, it's pretty dramatic stuff. I guess people at the time never considered that the hunting could be of such intensity and such a prolonged nature that the crocs would actually start to disappear. And it was the hunters who were the first people who started putting pressure on government to do something. At one stage in the early 70s, I had a, an interview with Mr. Bjorki Peterson when he came to Burketown and uh, I basically suggested that, that, that crocodiles should be protected, particularly the little crocodiles because because the large crocodiles had, had, had been um, largely shot out. But then when they started to recover uh, during the 70s, and so by the end of the 70s, people were seeing more crocodiles than most people had seen since the 1940s. And that's when a lot of controversy started.